Good morning, and welcome to the 2023 State of the City. My name is Jennifer Olvera, Chair of the Lomita Chamber of Commerce. On behalf of our Board of Directors and the City of Lomita, thank you for joining us here today. The Lomita Chamber is honored to present the State of the City Address as it's an opportunity to the highlights of the city efforts, key projects and initiatives, city priorities, partnerships, and future planning for Lomita. Shortly, we'll hear from our Mayor Barry Waite and the Lomita City Council, but first I would like to thank our sponsors who have helped make today's event even possible. Please hold your applause to the end. Athens Services, the Pacern Group, Southern California Edison, BB&K Law, Floral 101 for the amazing centerpieces that you're staring at, Coven Video Production, South Bay Credit Union, South Bay Workforce Investment Board, SoCal Gas, Trepepe Smith, Coastal Funeral Center, California Water Services Company, Water Replenishment District, State Farm Agent Tabitha Pennington, Nickerson Insurance Services, Burning Daylight Brewing Company, m and Management, Sherry Ashman. We thank you all for your active engagement and commitment to our community in supporting this event. I would also like to introduce some of our local businesses and community partners that are here today and work so hard for making Lomita better. First, we would like to thank Ever's Fantastic Cafe for providing the State of the City's delicious breakfast this morning. Floral 101, Sprinkles and Stuff, Lomita Mail and Print, Coven Video Productions, and Manhattan Beach Studios. The Lomita Historical Society and Lomita Chamber of Commerce for these priceless historical photos that you see around the room and in the other area where we had our breakfast. This would not be possible without the help from our chamber board members and our ambassadors. Jane Lau and Mary Hornicle, who I believe are still in the other room checking people in, but I would like to ask our, if you're in the room, and our board members to please stand and be recognized. Board members of Lomita Chamber of Commerce. Now I have the honor of turning this over to our mayor, Barry Waite. So I want to let you know that I had a plan originally that I was going to do this as a musical. I thought it would be great to do the whole event as a musical, but I was outvoted. Not by the council, but by the chorus. So, but we are doing something a little different today. We have, as you've probably seen, um, city departments and our partner agencies all around the room. And uh, they're gonna be sharing with you today uh, what they've been doing and some important information from each of them. So uh, you won't have to listen to me as much. And I uh, want to thank all of you for being here, of course. This is a really fun event that we have in Lamita. It's a time to get together and celebrate as a city family and, uh, and enjoy some good time together. You know, they say it takes a village to raise a child, but in this case, we are the village, right? So what does it take? It takes a lot of people working together to make it work, and it makes a lot of people working together well to make it work well. That's what we have in Lamita. So, uh, we are very proud of our city family. I would like to invite uh, my colleagues from the South Bay Coastliners, and so please rise for the singing of the national anthem led by our director, Dr. Peter Nuschel. Oh,
Thank you, gentlemen. Enjoy your breakfast. I probably should have figured out a way to do this without me running up and down the stairs, but. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So first, I wanted to thank uh, Heidi Butzin, who heads our chamber for her all of her hard work every day, but particularly in this event, to make it happen. Jennifer Olvera and the board, the volunteers at the Chamber of Commerce for hosting and putting together this event. The Chamber is definitely an important part of the city family. So we have with us uh, this morning, we have Council Member Mark Warneck and his wife, Christine. Council member Cindy Sagawa and her husband Chris, who is not the mayor in spite of what we are told on Veterans Day. <laughs> Councilman Gaisley is ill this morning and can't join us, but we have Mayor Pro Tem Bill Uphoff and his wife Karen. And my wife Margie can't be with us this morning because she is running a food packing operation for 500 families this morning with Rotary. So I thought that was more important. Um, we have a number of our former council members and mayors with us this morning. If you would rise, I see Bob Steinbach. I saw Susie Dever. We're glad to have you with us this morning. We have the support of our legislative colleagues and we have, is uh, Elmer Tsuchi here yet? I know he will be here. But he'll be joining us. So we, we also have representatives from his staff, Congressman Ted Liu, Senator Ben Allen, LA County Supervisor Janice Hahn, and our LA County Assessor, Jeff Prank. The Assessor, not the Treasurer Tax Collector, because the person who does the tax collecting is the person with that in their title, as Jeff always says. And then we have another a number of other representatives who are very important to us. From LA Unified School District, I believe I saw our school board member come in, Tanya Ortiz Franklin. There she is. And we have our principals with us. If you'd rise, please. And remember, the principal is your pal. I want to give a shout out to our friend Sharnell Blevins, who we've missed being away for a little while, and glad to have her back with us. Could we have all of our commissioners rise, including our GPAC members, our General Plan Advisory Committee? So. These are the people who do a lot of the heavy lifting for us in this city and manage a lot of important programs. I know some years ago when I was on the Planning Commission, we had a gentleman who was very angry and he said, you are all just here for the money. And we said, um, we don't get paid. And he goes, oh, then why do you do this? <laughs> but we do it because we love it. We know it's important to our community. Um, I see Councilmember Alex Montero from the city of Hawthorne. Morning, Alex. And we have Jackie Backrack from the South Bay City's Council of Governments. Monica Diaz is here somewhere from the Wilmington Chamber of Commerce. Where are you, Monica? I know she's here, she's quiet. And she's also a Lameda resident. It's interesting how many of the chambers of commerce around our area are run by people who are from Lomita. Curious. And so then I wanted to uh, recognize our city manager, Ryan Smoot. Where are you, Ryan? Hiding, I'm sure. There he is in the back. By the door. Ryan always refers to our staff as Team Lomita. And these events don't come together on their own. We really have an excellent staff that makes these things come off and make it all look easy. They really are Team Lomita. And I know it seems like a, a cliche phrase, but it's true. We really do have an organization where the people work together for a common purpose with dedication and enthusiasm. And a large measure of that is because Ryan has created a culture of innovation where employees are more concerned about doing something right than getting in trouble for trying something that doesn't work. And that may sound like a small distinction, but it's not. He's created a culture that has allowed our staff to be creative and try new ideas, which helped us deal with COVID um, and other challenges much more quickly than a lot of the communities in our area. So it is bittersweet that I announce Ryan is leaving us. He's leaving us for the city of Bellflower, which is where we stole him from in the first place. So they said they loaned him to us for several years, and now they need him back. Bellflower is four times our size in population, and it will commute, cut his commute down to one mile. So 
uh, we certainly can't fault him that. Ryan, you have big shoes to fill and a big hat. So he likes his hats. But we will miss you very much. And so I know you hate recognition, but we're doing it anyway. So we have comings and goings. And on the coming side, we have our new sheriff station captain, Kimberly Guerrero. And representing LA County uh, Fire Station, uh, the Fire Department, and Station Six, we have Assistant Chief Brian Bennett. And we want all of you to feel like you're part of Team Lomito. We work together and we get things done. And it really does take the whole team to make it happen. There's Monica. Hi, Monica. So with that, we have a little video celebrating uh, our background. So Lomita is celebrating 60 years as a city now. So here we see the northeast corner of Lomita and Narbonne was a service station, beautifully repurposed as the South Bay Credit Union. A few blocks to the west on Lomita Boulevard, we have the old Fire Station 6. which for many years now has been the glass and mirror shop. Cool old building. So the post office has had several locations around town, and this is one of the earlier ones that, in the photos, the trim tart, and they've now re renamed themselves the Caramia Baking. We all know the hot and tot, but I didn't know they used to do drive up service. It's a cool shot, isn't it? And they're still in business, still great. I don't think these cars are around anymore, but the southwest corner of Lomita and Narbonne is certainly recognizable. And the new cars may not be as fun, but I'm sure they're much more comfortable on a rainy day. Moving to the northwest corner, we can see the old market. which is now one of our many martial arts schools. No wonder Lomita is so safe. <laughs> Gamby's Mortuary was a fixture in the community. And Coastal has done a great job refurbishing this classic structure. Here's one little tougher to recognize. but it's still a thriving collection of businesses. And take a look at Gasser's Garage, built in 1929. And it's still there and still run by the same family 94 years later. Lomita Feed Building is another classic. And they're about to start a remodel to modernize it again. Horses still need hay. And here's the Lomita Theater where the Gum Sisters used to perform. You probably know the youngest of them by her stage name, Judy Garland. I wonder if she knew karate. Would it have worked on the Flying Monkeys? And here's Bronze Automotive. The building was built in 1922. And it's still the place to take your classic car for registration like where I took my little Model A. And with that, looking back, let's look forward with our little Lomita entrepreneurs. Kids, are you excited for today? Yeah! It's great to be here in Lomita for Lemonade Day. I mean, just seeing all these young people, like learning how to be the entrepreneurs, I mean, and having fun, most importantly, right? I would say 100% jump in. It's one of our favorite days. If you look around, our entire staff is here today. They're so passionate about it. They're super excited to see the kids, what they're going to do. It's rewarding, and everybody in our team really appreciates being a part of Lemonade Day in Lomita.
absolutely sign up to be a sweet spot. I think that working with our community, getting in with the kids, not only does it raise awareness for your own business, but it gives the kids a sense of pride, a place to go, and it's memories that are made forever. So these kids, even if they're already gonna to be too old to come and do it next year, we're gonna be a place that's a bit of place in their memories and in their hearts for life. Well, I will tell them to do it if you really want to come through. If you have to come through with your promise to do it, it's not something to take half-heartedly. You have to use your whole heart to take it. It's been pretty awesome. We've had open communication with, you know, our Lemonade people, and they've been saying that, you know, we're helping them advertise and, you know, get the word out there. And I think it's a really great experience for business owners just because, you know, people are going to come by the spot to support the kids. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself. Be a professional. Treat your customers right and learn how to make things go, and learn from the experience. So the parents, I say, let your kid run it, not you. It gets very easy for parents to take over, and you can tell most of these kids, they know what they're doing. And to the sponsors who are providing a place for them, thank you for making this possible. We're honored to have you as our Lomita business people. I couldn't be more proud of each and every one of you, and I'm looking at everybody who's here today, the kids, the families, the moms, the dads, the grandparents, everybody who has supported this wonderful program that's brought to you by the city of Lamita in partnership with the chamber. So how many of you participated in Lemonade Day last year as a sponsor uh, or came around to, to sample? Um, or in, any, in some way participated. It is an amazing event. Although the most important thing that any of us had learned, if you visit several sands, do not drink a whole glass of lemonade at each one. You cannot do this. That is, you cannot do it, much as you might like to. Uh, I visited 25 sands last year. Cindy, how many did you get? 37. So uh, yeah, that's, that's a lot of lemonade. Your ears start turning colors but it is an amazing program. And so I would urge you next year to consider uh, helping out with the program. These kids learn so much then they run it themselves. And I thought one of the kids, frankly, I thought his dad had put all this together. And so I asked him a couple of questions and he went into his business plan in detail and he had it all memorized. I'm like, ah, okay. So I will give credit where credit is due. So really great kids doing some really great stuff because we've given the opportunity. So maybe you'll consider participating next year. And come have some lemonade because there's some really good lemonade. Although I found I do not like cucumber lemonade. That one doesn't work for me. Why, my wife thought it was great. And uh, our city attorney's daughters did um, uh, shave ice lemonade. That was really good. So anyway, a very fun event and it's a great, who's, who puts this on? Lomita Chamber of Commerce. So where our city comes from brings us to where we are now, and then it helps us look at where we are going moving forward. So for example, this building was completed as World War II was ending, and as you can see, it has been refurbished many times, repurposed, and, uh, and made anew. And we have plans in the future for upgrades of it. Um, and so as we go through our general plan process now, it's the same thing, that we, we don't ignore our past, but we move forward. So with that, now I would like to turn this over to my council colleagues to tell you more on how a city of Lomita is looking up and looking forward. So Cindy, you're up first. Good morning. Lomita has a very fascinating history, and what better way to tell us more than where we have been is the Lomita Historic Society, and I would like to introduce Bruce Bornman to tell us about the efforts of, of the Historical Society. Good morning. We all know Lomita was incorporated in 1964, but we have history going back 
into the 1880s, 1890s. And to preserve that history, we formed the Lameda Historical Society in 1974. Some of the people involved in the formation of the society were those who were party to the incorporation of Lameda. Names you've known, Jim Cole, Rich and Dion Colberry, Ruth Herbert, Bill and Vivian Paytel. And our, our goal is, of course, to preserve as much of the history as possible. And in the last four or five years, we have assembled over six or 7,000 documents. We have collected them, organized them, indexed them. And our next goal, I think all Lamita is is summed up in 56 different categories <laughs> of history. And our next goal is to scan all these items and get them out in a database available to the public. That's our goal for the next several years. Thank you. Are there, are there any upcoming events or projects that the, that the public can participate in? Well, our... Our 50th uh, anniversary is next year, and we'll have something uh, as part of one of the city programs. So you'll notify the city and we'll get it in that newsletter that Lena takes care of for us? Okay, <clears throat> and now also there is a time capsule that's buried over at City Hall. Um, it's scheduled to be unearthed on July 4th of 2026. Can you tell us about that? Well, the Historical Society, that was actually done by the Lameda Centennial Committee, which was part of the 1976 U.S. Bicentennial. And uh, so the, the committee handled that. There's various people of input into it, the school, the newspapers, sister city, chamber, supervisor's office, the Railroad Museum, of all put things into that capsule, we'll all find out exactly what it is when we're there next year. Thank you so much. Next, we'll head over to Los Angeles Unified School District. We have Tanya Ortiz Franklin, our school board member who's up for re-election. We have Edith. We have Charnel Blevins. All good, all good. Good morning, Lomita. How are you feeling? I was the one at the beginning of the Lemonade Day video, in case you couldn't tell. I was a cheerleader at Narbonne High School. Can we say go Gauchos? Oh, can we say go Gauchos? <laughs> I've got that spirit in me forever. So yes, I'm Tanya, and I'm excited to introduce our principals to briefly say a word about their schools, because the school is the heart of the community. I can tell you as a Fleming alum, as a Narbonne alum, there are amazing things happening in our Lomita schools. And we want to make sure you all know that all kids and families are welcome in our school. And if you didn't know, four-year-olds can come to school for free now with Universal Transition Kindergarten. So Miss Edith Urzua is our director for all of our Lomita Harbor City schools. Charnel Blevins is my teammate, the focus for Lo uh, she's my lead for Lomita. But I'm going to just run it over to the principals to say one quick sentence about their amazing school, if that's okay. We'll go in a circle, starting with Mr. Vasquez at Hearts High School. Good morning. I'm the proud principal at Hearts Academy, Ray Vasquez. Um, we are co-located uh, on the Norbon campus. Um, we are School for Advanced Studies, and just fun fact, um, last year we were recognized by the state of California as an arts exemplary program, so thank you. you want to and we'll go to Narbonne, Heather Caruso. <laughs> Good morning, my name is Heather Caruso. I am the principal of Narbonne High School and the former principal of Fleming Middle School. So my heart is definitely in Lomita. Fun fact about Narbonne High School is that uh, some of our notable graduates, uh, Bo Derrick and Quentin Tarantino, although th actually they did not graduate from Narbonne, they went to Narbonne. But that to say, I'm sure we have some Narbonne alum in the house, some gauchos in here, yes. And although those famous people did not graduate from Narbonne. Narbonne did have 100% graduation on time last year. Good morning. 
Good morning, everyone. I'm Marissa Harrod, pr proud principal of Lamita Steam Magnet Elementary. So let's see, we're on Narbonne Avenue and 247th, and actually that was the very first uh, elementary, public elementary school to be located in the city of Lamita back in 1909. But it wasn't an elementary school, it was actually a high school uh, that eventually moved to the location of Fleming. But back in 1933, that Long Beach earthquake took out that original brick building. Um, but let me just see, Magnet has been a magnet school since 1978. We are um, California Distinguished. We are STEAM officially certified with LAUSD, and we are Magnet um, School Award of Excellence. So we're so proud. Thank you. Hi, good morning everyone. I'm Didiana Ramirez, proud principal of Fleming Middle School. Fun fact is that uh, we actually used to uh, host students from seventh grade to ninth grade. There was one year where we actually had two culminations, one for eighth grade and one for ninth grade as they transitioned to high school. We were the facility to also house Narbonne High School at one point, so it's a huge facility for a middle school. We have all the amenities of a high school but not for high school students. For middle school students, sixth grade through eighth grade. Uh, we are making new Fleming history for the first time last school year. We had eighth grade scholars enrolled into college courses with Elio Harbor College. So we did start that new partnership. We are currently the highest enrollment of middle school students with Elio Harbor College. So we have scholars making Fleming history for the very first time. Uh, last school year, we're, uh, we're also California distinguished uh, STEAM program last school year and this school year back to back where we just submitted our application hoping for a three-peat um, of California distinguished nomination. So thank you for having us today. Hey, Ms. Gomez from Eshelman. Hi, I'm Kelly Gomez, the proud principal of Eshelman Avenue Elementary. We just celebrated our 100th birthday. <laughs> Eshelman opened their doors in September of 1923 and it has gone through three different name changes. It started with Eshelman Avenue and then went to Orange Street um, Elementary to 259th Street and then back to um, Eshelman Avenue. They actually, for being the 1920s, they, their first PTO meeting was also in 1923. So Eshelman's been around for a long time and we're gonna be celebrating all year and we'll, we'd love to have you guys come help us celebrate. Yay, thank you. And LA Unified is so giant that Lomita and Harbor City are a big family together in our district. So we have from Harbor City Elementary here, Ms. Sherman. Hi, we're like your cousins. Um, my name is Laura Sherman. This is Amber Pachuki. We are the intervention coordinators at Harbor City uh, STEAM Academy. We are currently going through our STEAM certification with LA Unified. We're moving into getting through year two. Um, and we are your sister cousins, so we're right down the street. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. So I'm so proud to represent 175 schools from South Los Angeles to San Pedro, but of course my heart will always be with Lomita Harbor City, our family of schools here. Thank you for welcoming us to your space today. Thank you for celebrating our students, our families, our learners who are absolutely going to help Lomita keep looking up. Thanks, Cindy. <laughs> Thanks. Now I'll introduce Edith, and Edith has a few words to say. Just a few. I think our time's up. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Edith Rizzo. I'm the regional director for the Harbor City Lomita Network. We are a wonderful network of 11 amazing schools, and we have this wonderful project that we want to work on. We want to revamp our beautiful garden at Narbonne High School that uh, Narbonne Hearts also participates in. We wanted to make it a learning garden, a network garden. So please come visit us so we can tell you more about that. Thank you. I um, retired out of LA Unified two years ago so that I could be the mayor last year. Now we're going to come over here to the Railroad Museum and I'm going to introduce Dasha Bello and Jenna Barnett. Hi guys. <laughs> Hello. Uh, so our museum was actually founded in 1967 by Mrs. Irene Lewis. Uh, in honor of her late husband, Martin Lewis, and they were both uh, residents and local railroad enthusiasts. And uh, the two of them owned and operated a, uh, um, a business called Little Engines uh, that actually was on the property where the museum sits today. And when Martin passed away, 
Irene took it upon herself to uh, basically build a museum from the ground up, and to, um, to build a museum from the ground up to introduce railroading history to the community. And today it features a massive collection of artifacts from the early 1800s to the mid 1900s, uh, including two cabooses and our Southern Pacific steam locomotive number 1765. You guys may have seen it. So right now our museum offers free admission um, so that railroad knowledge can reach anyone and everyone. We provide tours to guests who may be there on their own. Oh no, one of my, my menus. Um, so we also offer rental facilities. We have our grass field, the Irene Lewis Field, as well as our annex park. Um, earlier this year, we actually hosted our first annual Night at the Museum, which went really well. Uh, we took a step back from the museum part and made it a real-life station. Currently, we have our upcoming Santa event on December 10th, as well as our Tea with Friends, and we're actually taking reservations today. And we do have a new addition coming to the museum. Who would like to talk about that? We're very, very excited to talk about this. We actually received the call, the two of the two of us. Uh, we are very excited to say that recently, the Port of Los Angeles actually reached out to us uh, to see if the city would like to accept a replica of a Pacific Electric red car trolley. Uh, <laughs> we're currently developing a plan to relocate and display it uh, as this very unique piece of local history. So thank you very much. That will be very exciting to have in the city of Lomita. Now we are going to come over to our park staff. <clears throat> we have um, Sean Ritchie and Robert Heaney. Hi, my name is Robert Heaney. I'm the assistant recreation coordinator for the recreation and facilities department. Our department offers five sports year round for youth ages four through 14. In the winter, we have basketball. In the spring, we have soccer. Baseball's in the summer, and we're currently in our flag football and volleyball leagues. With that, we have about 230 kids in our league participating right now, and they're getting ready for playoffs next season, so it's a very exciting time. In the summer, we also offer our teen summer program for ages 11 through 14, and they do daily activities such as movie days, crafts, sports, as well as field trips to like Angel Games and Soak Cities. One last thing, we are excited to announce that our men's basketball leagues are coming back in January and will be running year round. Thank you. Thank you. We do have our 60th anniversary coming up, as Barry mentioned. Can you tell us a little bit about what to expect from the park? Yes, I can, hello. Uh, my name is Sean Ritchie. I am the recreation supervisor here with the city of Lamita. Um, so, we know that Lamita is going to be turning 60 uh, next year, so we are planning several uh, events. So we're kicking off in June with our biggest event, Founders Day. I'm sure everyone knows about Founders Day. It's a great, great event, carnival rides, all that good stuff. Um, we actually have an event coming up December 1st. It's our annual tree lighting ceremony over at City Hall, so make sure you guys show up for that. It's always fun. Um, so yeah, we're turning uh, 60, so we're starting with Founders Day. In June, um, after Founders Day, we have two concerts in the park. We have two movies under the stars that happen at City Hall. Um, and one big thing that we are bringing back in October is our annual 5K. Um, I know it's been a few years since uh, we've had that, but it was a big uh, deal back uh, a few decades ago. So we're bringing it back, and it's going to mix with our Halloween event. So that'll be a good, uh, good event starting at City Hall, ending here at the park. Um, other than that, we have a newsletter here that uh, offers, or it shows what we are offering, all of our classes, sports, uh, events. It comes out every quarter, um, so I guess a quarter is four times a year. Um, if you don't uh, look in the newsletter, we encourage everybody to go on LamitaCity.com. Uh, that's the best way to see uh, also what we're offering throughout the year. And um, that's it. So thank you. I would like to really thank the park staff. We are so fortunate to have such a wonderful park staff. Emma is ahead of it. We have these two. We have 
the, the coaches who do such a terrific job. We have kids, not just from Lomita, that participate in our programs, but we have Torrance and Palos Verdes that come over to participate because we have such a terrific staff. Thank you so much. And I'll turn it over to Mark. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, Cindy and I are the party planners on the city council, so we're the subcommittee for the 60th anniversary. And we have a lot of good stuff planned starting next year for Founders Day. Before I begin, I just wanted to inter uh, inter introduce and recognize our state assembly member, our assembly member, Al Mursucci. Thank you, Al, for being here. And from the city of Torrance, and also works for Coastal Funeral Center, um, Torrance City Councilwoman Sharon Kalani. All right, so now let's get back to the program here. And I get to the honor and privilege to talk about the Friends of Lamita Library. Next, uh, we, the Lamita, uh, Lamita Library is a nonprofit organization which was founded in 1972. And here we have our good friend, Pat Kromka, president of the Friends of the Lamita Library, to tell us a little bit about the Friends and what they've been doing in our community. Pat. Thank you, and good morning to everybody. The people of Lamita have been supportive of libraries all the way back. If you go back to the early 1900s, Lamita residents applied to the county to have a library. And the libraries were all storefronts. We didn't get to the one that we have today until 1976. But as Mark has mentioned, our group was started in 1976, prior to moving to this one, because the people in the community really wanted to help and support the library in buying books and promoting programs, whatever we could do, we would uh, do, and the people became very active. However, for those of you who remember, big trouble in the 1990s. The state budget was in trouble, the county budget was in trouble, and they were gonna close the Lamita Library because they figured it was a small county library time to close, and that's when the friends really jumped in and got busy and worked real hard and got organized and worked with our local and state politicians and procured an assessment district for each piece of property in the city of Lamita. Now, the first one that went and passed, passed by 50 some percent, but it wasn't accepted. So the group had to go back out again and get the signatures and get the vote, and the second time it had to be you know, two thirds, and it was reached. And right now, I happen to look at my tax bill the other day. It's uh, $33.86 that all of us are assessed, and the whole point was to buy books for the library. So uh, the group has been very, very active, but currently we're a little unactive. Probably one of the biggest events that we've ever that we sponsor every single year for the community is the annual tea. But we haven't been able to have it since 19, uh, 2019. What's happened is uh, we asked the community, who are the outstanding members in our community that we can honor? And usually we get about five different people's names. We honor them, we have a big tea in the library uh, now in the, we do it in the, our room that we now have. Oh, that was another thing that we <laughs> worked real hard at fighting for is we never had a place to hold a meeting. And people used to complain to the librarians that uh, why are you having all these meetings in here and these things disrupting us while we're trying to do work in the library? So we put some pressure on again and we got, as you may see, the, the community room. And uh, we hope to have our, restore our honorary T uh, in 2024 in September. And you know, we have a lot of things that we buy and purchase for the library, not only books, but also programs that we support for the parents as well as for the children. 
Uh, those of you who have been to the library, you can see we put up a big donor board where we paralleled with the Railroad Museum, and we have a big train on the one wall where we honor the individual members. You know, the lifetime members are the engine, the children who are members are the caboose, and the other cars are our regular members and our business members. So uh, we want to continue all of that. And right now, we are in the process of getting a new board or setting up for a new board, and we do have openings. So any of you who are eager and want to, uh, are dedicated and would like to, as, as you have been to the library in the past and would care about coming to, into the libraries as a officer in the Friends of Lamita Library, please contact us because our big annual meeting is, uh, and your public is welcome, that we hold every single year is Saturday, 10 o'clock on December 2nd. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. As you can see, the friends play a crucial role in promoting uh, literacy, supporting library programs, and enhancing the overall resources and services available to library patrons. As you can see, we're very active in the community and we're very proud of the Don Kanabi room that's in front of the library that we as a city council okayed a few years ago and named it right before he left office. So that was really special because Don Kanabi, as you know, was a big, big supporter as well as, well as our current supervisor um, for, the, for the library system itself. So thank you, Pat, and everything you do. All right, next we have our city clerk, Kathleen Gregory and Administration Services Director, Susan Kamada. Uh, Kathleen, tell us about all about the Lomita's tradition um, to district-based elections and how um, our next November election will be different, real different. Okay, so I'll briefly update you on the City Council election. So in January of 2022, the city received a letter challenging at-large elections. So after, uh, uh, in order to avoid litigation, the, the city council um, decided to um, transition to, from uh, at-large election to dis by district election. So in May of 2023, um, an ordinance was adopted. And so, um, uh, beginning with the upcoming 2024 election, the city council uh, will be elected in, by district in five single member districts. So residents will now vote for the council member that resides in their district. So in 2024, districts two and four will be up for election. And then in 2026, council um, districts one, three, and five will be up for election and the city council will continue to select a mayor to serve one-year terms. Um, so uh, additional information can be found on our website under, you just type in districting, or you can call the city clerk's office and I'll be glad to uh, answer any questions that I can for you. I'll tell you something, and I know this is off script, but the city council reluctantly voted to do this because if we didn't, we would have gotten sued. And in a small city like us, we don't have the money or the means to, to fight something like this. So we're going to have one, each district will have what close to 4,200 uh, residents in each district, which 1.9 square miles, in my opinion, does not make any sense. But it is what it is, and we have to move forward with a happy face. So with that, um, I give you Susan Kamada, our great finance director. Thank you, Council Member Warnick. Good morning. So uh, the city is in a great place right now. We've been, um, in the last fiscal year, we've been able to fund additional projects, such as a general plan update, expanding Founders Day, and um, creating new and exciting special events, and more street and water projects for the community. Um, overall, our revenues have been pretty strong over the last few years. Um, one of our primary revenues is sales tax. That includes Measure L. 
and that has been a large part in our ability to continue investing in projects in our community. Measure L alone is producing approximately two million annually, and the council has dedicated those funds to capital projects and programs in the community. Without that, um, it would be a much different story for us here. Um, and so in total, we have seen about an average of five to 6% growth in our revenues annually compared to about 10 years ago. Community investments are higher this year than ever because you know, we've been able to save money and reinvest those through capital through our recently approved capital improvement and water master plan. <clears throat> in addition to all these projects, um, our administrative services department, we've been able to modernize our business license processes and uh, bring them online for easy access for our, our businesses to do their renewal processes. Um, we've also developed some budget software to help streamline our processes internal processes and um, give more transparency to the community. So on top of all of this, um, over the last seven years, we've been able to invest more than four million into the city's reserve. And um, those are available in case of any emergencies or un unforeseen downturns in the economy. So overall, Lomita is in a much better financial shape than we have been for a very long time. And my team and I will continue working to ensure that it stays that way. Thank you. Thank you, Susan and Kathleen. When, when, when she says, talks about, you know, more revenue to the city, you're gonna hear a little bit over from Brianna later why the revenues are hopefully gonna be increasing and some of the exciting things that are coming in Lamita. And as you saw, or maybe you didn't see, our, our fire station six had to take a call. Unfortunately, they had to leave. But um, I, it's my honor and privilege to, to introduce um, our heroes in our community, our fire department, and our sheriff's department next. So I get to, and you know me, I always like to go off script. And Rosemary is looking at me before I started over here. And she, I told her last night we were at an event that I was going to wear my fire helmet that was bestowed to me by the uh, LA County Fire, which I was told doesn't happen very often to a regular folk like me. And I forgot it. And it's such a cool helmet. I know, I, I, could, I guess I can you know, get away with that, but it's a white Lamita fire, uh, um, fire Chief helmet, which is so, super cool. So with that, I'd like to introduce Assistant uh, Fire Chief Brian Bennett from the Lamita Fires and from Lamita Fire Station from LA County Fire, along with Battalion Chief, uh, Jeff Harms, but I, Jeff, no, we, yeah, we got to change the staff. okay, no problem. We got to roll with the punches and community service liaison, Rosemary Vivero. Take it away. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. And uh, thank you all for having us here this morning. We're honored to be here. And I did um, want to introduce our team here, uh, Battalion Chief John Batorovich. Uh, so uh, the Battalion Chief is the one who's there 24-7, any emergency call large emergency call, he'd be out there um, running the call. Um, we have a new uh, senior secretary three in division one, Natalie Ruda. So she was recently promoted. Uh, she's been with us about two months and she's fantastic. She just kind of points me in the direction and, and uh, tells me what to do for the day. So we are super fortunate to have her. And then of course, uh, Rosemary Vivero, she's your uh, community service liaison, fantastic, right? Yes. Um, been with our department 20 years and she is there for the community and she does a wonderful job with all the 10 cities that she serves, but she definitely has a special spot for Lamita here. So today what we'd like to do real quick is just talk a little bit about emergency Please. preparedness and then we can answer some questions. And Rosemary, um, who put up this wonderful table, is going to talk about it. Thank you, Chief. Welcome, everybody. So we all know what... Uh, we think what the fire department does, which is does fire and rescues, but one of our other jobs is to get you prepared. And that's, if you come up to our booth, let's get prepared. Have a plan, have supplies, stay informed, and get involved. So we have extra information for you here. This is the handout, and it tells you different things that you could prepare. We have a more detailed handout where it tells you 
uh, how to save documents, what to, t uh, what to put together from birth certificates to uh, gun registration, and then the different 15 minute, 30 minute uh, evacuation. These are things that you need to be prepared for. We also have the different programs that we have, uh, how to use 911, the water safety program. This is a new program that we have out there. It's called, um, so pretty much, it's almost like it's a water watcher. It's kind of like the designated driver, and it teaches people there should be one person who isn't on their phone, hasn't been drinking, and they watch the pool, and they watch, uh, or, or they're out on the beach, so it's so important, and we provide little whistle and glasses. So these are programs, again, anything to do with safety and making a better place for you, we try to do for you. We have, we have the hands-only CPR, which is pretty much just, you know, uh, dial 911 and push hard and fast, and we can do that at any of uh, your clubs or services to teach your community because we, you know, there's different types of hometown heroes, and you could make a difference by just doing the basic CPR. We have our two programs that we have, CERT, that's a 20-hour program where you could be part of a team uh, if, in, case of an evac in case of a disaster if all our resources are, are not there. But we also have a new program coming back that we're gonna start in 2024 and it's called Listos, which means uh, ready in Spanish. And it's just a gateway to CERT. So if you don't feel like being part of a team, but you know what? You want your family to be prepared for basic things from you know, how to put a, a bag together, how to use a fire extinguisher, basic first aid. This is a program at six to eight hours. We can do it at your church, at, at uh, your school, a PTA meeting. So that's coming to you in uh, 2024. So other programs that we have for the youth is, and that's what's important, some people don't understand that we have youth programs. We have something called the Junior Lifeguard Program, and that's for uh, uh, kids at ages 9 to 17, where we teach them ocean uh, safety, uh, physical conditioning, first aid, and those begin in June, if you're interested. We also have the Explorer Program, where we expose the young men and women to the fire service. That are ages 15 to, uh, and 20, and we're going to begin registration in January. Uh, the last thing that we do have is something called a girls camp. Now, it's not just for girls, but we're trying to encourage more women in the fire service because that's where we're lacking. And that's ages 9 to 17, and it's introduced them to the fire service in general, not just firefighters. We have dispatchers. We have mechanics. We have, uh, you know, so many things, computer services. So we have these programs. That, and by the way, did I mention they're all free to you? Well, except for the Explorer program, because that is through Learning for Life, and that's about $60 a year. And the good thing is with Exploring, you could be part of the Fire Explorer program, but you can join the other programs with that same $60. You can learn how to fly a plane. You could be part of the Sheriff's Department, just like they have the, uh, the Explorer program. And um, so, again, we want you to come talk to us. Uh, if you go to, um, see, I forgot already, fire.lacounty.gov. Look at all these programs. Look them up. I'm trying to think, and I, I have some sweat. For you that's here oh I this is important too something new in the if you don't know we have a new fire chief made sure I brought him with us one way or another <laughs> his name is Anthony Maroney but you can call him Tony Maroney that's what he says so so that's important so we have our swag and then again I want to leave you with have a plan have supplies stay informed and get involved thank you So you can see uh, Rosemary's real new to this, right? Yeah. 20 years, she's fantastic. She sets this up. She does it multiple times a month. But remember, she's here for you and for the city of Lamita. 21 years. 21. I'm, see, I, she keeps me in line. She usually straightens out my tie and everything. But yeah, wonderful. Just have a wonderful, sorry, wonderful team here in Lamita. All right. Thank you, Chief, and thank you, Rosemary. And we love Fire Station 6 here in Lamita. All right. Next, we're excited about this one right here. Uh, I get to introduce to you newly appointed Chief of Police at Lamita Sheriff Station, which she's already told me that Lamita's already her favorite city, Captain Kimberly Guerrero. Captain Guerrero, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your plans for the station under your leadership? Thank you, Mark, I appreciate that. Good morning. Uh, first and foremost, I just want to introduce uh, a few people that are with me and uh, actually the core of Lamita Station and the reason why it's such a great station. Uh, Lieutenant Mike White, uh, right here. He's actually, uh, he's run the station for the past year and done an outstanding job. So to come in and partner with him, um, I'm actually humbled and honored to, to, to be a part of that. Uh, Sergeant McCoy, 
runs community relations, uh, outstanding job, and of course, uh, I'm sure most of you know Deputy Kellogg. Um, yes, thank you. A uh, little bit about myself. Uh, I've uh, been on the department 26 years, and uh, when the opportunity came to be uh, the captain here at Lameda Station, I was excited, and now that it's come to fruition, um, I'm actually I'm excited to be here and be a part of this community and this station because it is a great station. It's one of uh, the premier stations in our division. So to be a part of it is, uh, again, I'm very humbled and excited. So my goals are obviously uh, to build and maintain the public trust that, that uh, Lomita Station has, uh, they've already established here. So um, uh, working with you, the community, is, is definitely one of my priorities and to keep that relationship going. And the reason why uh, Lomita Station is a great station is because we have you, the community, supporting us. And that's, that, that makes a difference. So I appreciate the welcoming. I appreciate your support. We appreciate your support. So thank you very much. Uh, any other questions, sir? So just outside the gym, uh, we have a park sheriff vehicle dedicated to patrolling Lamita with a newly installed automated license plate reader. Can you tell us a little bit about this law enforcement tool that we use, are used by the deputies? Sure. So I just had to do a little bit of work up and study uh, about the vehicle, but it's a great tool, a great resource for the deputies. Um, there's only 100 in use uh, in, in LASD, and one of those is right here in Lameda Station. So we thank you uh, for that tool. Uh, what, what, what the car does is uh, it reads about four license plates per second. Um, and, you know, vehicles will go by, and it can read up to about, the vehicle can run a, go as fast as 160 uh, miles per hour and it'll read it. Um, so it reads about three to 6,000 plates per shift. Um, so that, that's outstanding. And what those, uh, what it alerts, it's, it's a one second alert time and what they alert on is stolen vehicles, missing persons, uh, warrants in excess of 26,000 um, or any felony uh, warrants that are on the plate, it'll alert the deputy and obviously we, we take it from there. So we're very lucky to have it. We thank you, and we appreciate uh, everything that you give us, all the resources and tools. So thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Captain, or can I, Chief, Chief of Police? Oh, okay. Um, you know, you mentioned Lieutenant White, and he, he is such a great asset to our community. So we're hoping that you stay a little bit longer, Lieutenant, to be a part of our station because I think with the two of you as a team, we're, we can do a lot of good, great things in our community, not just Lamita, but for the whole peninsula. Um, this lady is a rock star. I mean, Supervisor Janice Hahn, social media, our social media, she's all over the place recognizing her because we're really excited because we haven't had a woman uh, captain in quite some time. I think the last one was Rowanda. And so we're very excited to have her, girl power, right? So, with that, we have a little special something for you. Back a couple years ago, when I was president of Contract Cities, we, were, we uh, started doing jerseys, Team Lamita. And um, the staff, and under our, direct, under our city manager, really kind of bought into, you know, I'm a huge Dodger fan, cause, so they're Dodger blue, of course, and Lamita blue. But um, the staff bought into it and really uh, embraced this whole team concept, and that was under um, Ryan Smooter, city manager. So with that, and you are now part of Team Lamita, um, our mayor will present this nice jersey with your name on the back. Right on. Yeah. All right. You're welcome. All right, next I get to turn it over to our Mayor Pro Tem, Bill Uphoff. Thank you, Mark. Uh, I'm at the City Water Division table, and at this time I'd like to bring up Al Assemblyman Al Marasucci. He's got something to share. All right. But good morning, Lamita. I'm Al Marasucci, just call me Al. I'm proud to represent Lamita in the California legislature for nine years now. And um, I am here 
to uh, recognize all the hard work that the mayor uh, and the city council have been doing to make sure that Lamita has the safest, cleanest water in the South Bay. Yeah. That's right. And to support that effort, when they came to me, they were talking about the Narbonne uh, water main replacement project, and they asked for my support. I was happy to step up to support Lamita, again, to make sure that you have the cleanest, safest water in the South Bay. So on, on behalf of the state of California, I would like to present this check to the city of Lamita to support your Narbonne water replacement project. <laughs> The t-shirt's not quite worth $300,000, but I think it is become, because you're becoming a teammate of Lamita, not that you're already not a teammate of Lamita, so I'd like to present you with a uh, shirt as well, a jersey as well. Thank you very much. Someone like a friend of Michael Jordan's or something? Or? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One, three, yeah. One, three, okay. Can I get a photo of that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Actually, maybe I should well, actually. Uh, no, uh, let me just go. Okay, moving on to the public works table. I'd like to present uh, Carla Dillon and Juan Yabera. Uh, you know, public works, we don't have anything going on, right? I mean, you know, only the Cypress Water Project. Um, Jackie's here with the COG. We've been doing energy upgrades. Um, Athens SB 1383, that's the bill. For those people that don't know it, that's from the state, and it's on organic waste. We have, uh, you know, some of the mundane stuff, like, you know, where you might trip on a sidewalk. They've been shaving the sidewalks. They've been trimming trees. So a lot of things going on with public works. So I'll turn it over to Carla. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. I'll highlight a few projects coming up. Um, the capital improvement program has increased significantly in the last year. We have 11 projects that we initiated this year. And while we have two in construction, there'll be many more coming into the construction phase coming spring and summer, so I ask your patience. When you see um, roads blocked for repairs, a little short-term pain will result in long-term gain. Some of these projects include facilities, streets, water, stormwater, traffic safety. For instance, this, uh, this roof will be getting replaced uh, in the next year. And we can do more projects because of the financial state of the city as well as grants and financial assistance like we just received from uh, Assembly Member Marasucci's office. I also want to highlight some of the improvements that are happening on our sidewalks. Our street crew has been out inspecting all of our sidewalks and making improvements to help make the city a more walkable and safe space. And another capital project that I want to highlight is we received a grant for um, traffic circulation around our schools. So I'm hoping to connect in the coming year with our schools on improving traffic circulation for safety for the students. With that, I'll pass it on to Juan. Good morning, everyone. In July, we worked with the South Bay City Council of Governments to conduct a comprehensive inventory of our energy using equipment at city facilities to discover opportunities to save energy through replacing efficient equipment such as light bulbs, the HVAC systems, and windows. The information will be used for potential grant opportunities to pay for future upgrades. We identified a potential savings of 32,000 kilowatt hours of electricity through lighting upgrades that can result in savings of $10,000 annually for the city. In addition, we're also exploring opportunities for Lomita Manor to make energy efficient upgrades and improve the comfort level of residents through enrollment in the Southern California Regional Energies Network multifamily program. Through this program, the facility could receive financial incentives for saving energy. And I also wanted to talk about um, SB 1383. Starting in January, Lomita residents and businesses will be able to use green organics containers for the collection of organic waste, such as food scraps, landscaping waste, and, foil, and food soil paper. The change is part of the California Senate Bill, SB 1383 statewide effort to reduce emissions of short-lived climate pollutants by reducing organic waste disposal 
by 75% by the year 2025. The media residents and businesses can, inform, can be informed about SB 1383 facts and organics recycling by visiting our SB 1383 page on our city website. In addition to this, residents and businesses will also receive additional education material regarding SB 1383 from the city's waste hauler admin services. Thank you. Thank you, Carlin Juan. Okay, moving on to economic development. Oh, Will, don't run away. <laughs> so we have Brianna Ridge, Erica Barbaro, and Juan Lawson. I mean, Will Lawson, I'll get it right. So, you know, as we noted earlier, we have a lot of things going on, right? We've got the general plan update. They're getting uh, input from the general plan, plan advisory commission, the, the committee, the GPAC. We have... Um, the housing element update, which caused a lot of zone changes. You might have heard we've got a grocery store coming to Lamita, right? And then uh, code enforcement, we're actively working there. And we also approve murals. So look for murals going up on some of our buildings. So with that, I'll turn it over to Brianna. Thank you so much. And good morning, everyone. So the Community and Economic Development Department there's nothing back here, so I'm gonna step away from the speaker. Um, it's comprised of three different divisions, like Bill mentioned, planning, economic development, and code enforcement. And to, so hopefully you've noticed improved code enforcement around the city the past couple of years. Thanks mostly, in large part, all to our code enforcement officer, now code enforcement supervisor, Will Lawson. And so, yes. <laughs> For example, we are launching a graffiti abatement uh, campaign. So a three brushed approach to attacking the, or mitigating the graffiti problem that we do have around our area. So how can cities, how can the city work with property owners on mitigating, um, improving the quality of life in Lomita by, um, by addressing graffiti, not only as it exists today, what can property owners do such as planting vegetation in front of the walls or murals, like Bill mentioned, um, in order to deter graffiti, hopefully. And then also working with the local schools. We're in the next few months, we're hoping to do that to, to try to educate the children who may be those who are actually doing the graffiti. Um, and so not only is the quality of life improved through, hopefully you've noticed, the different code enforcement initiatives, but also Target that is coming in the next few months. Um, we're very excited to clean up the city just in terms of um, not only what's here, but what's to come. And in order to do that, there has to be a general plan. So what is a general plan? Well, any single, any development that comes through, big or small, must be, uh, must comply with the general plan of which our city hasn't updated in 25 years, 1998. And so um, we've enlisted the help of DeNovo Planning Group and this summer embarked on a community engagement, uh, an entire campaign where we worked with over 150 people at the public workshops we had at the library. We've had uh, almost 200 responses to the community survey and city council formed the general plan advisory committee, um, which many of you are here today, so thank you so much. Um, this has been a lengthy process and that will eventually be about a two and a half year process and we're coming up on, we, we're kind of at a pivotal point right now. So um, through all of that community input, there's been a list of nine different priorities that have been put together, highlighted by preserving our single family neighborhoods or um, making the city much more walkable and not so scary to walk along PCH. Um, so with that, the we have worked with the consultant to create the future land use plan. And in the past month, both city council and planning commission have had three different meetings on that future land use plan that will then inform the rest of the general plan update to include noise and open space, housing, everything that, especially with all of the mandates coming down from the state recently. So um, none of this is possible without the help of our partners, new and old. I am definitely excited to, um, to mention the fact that we got Lamita chosen as one of the cities in the University of Southern California Sunstone Economic Development Challenge, where some of the best and brightest in USC's grad school will be competing to come up with different economic development initiatives for the city, specifically related to entrepreneurship over the, over the next year. And then also, of course, the Lamita Chamber. We have representation of the Lamita Chamber on the General Plan Advisor 
committee that was formed by city council. And as we've had a few different ordinances in a post COVID world come through, such as outdoor dining or drive up um, designated parking spaces, trying to work with the business owners that we have here to ensure that those ordinances are the best for property owners as well. So I'm here with one of our planners, Erica Barbero. We have lots of handouts, QR codes. If you'd like to know about ADUs, we have a whole new web page. Um, come up and talk to us. We're happy to help you work on your project. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Last but not least, the Chamber of Commerce. So first off, I want to give a big shout out and let's get another round of applause for the Chamber and City staff for putting on today's event. Okay, so with me is Tracy Maestro, right? Got it. She's the chair-elect of the chamber. Um, you know, the theme today is Lomita's looking up, and, you know, so can you uh, provide some uh, updates on the chamber's aspirations for the future? Sure. So everybody knows about Lemonade Day. Uh, the, we did our third one this year. It was bigger and better than all of them. It's just getting bigger and better each year. We're doing it again next year. These kids are learning how to run their own business. Um, and all we ask in return is that they, they save a little, they spend a little, and they give back a little. So they're also learning how to be part of a community. And it's all at free of charge to these kids. So what we really need is sponsorships to help these kids get them through the program. Um, it's, it's amazing. And we're also looking at, in the future, kind of expanding it to possibly junior high or high school age, not exactly lemonade stands. We're gonna come up with something that'll interest them a little bit more, but we wanna keep that entrepreneurship going throughout their entire you know, childhood career so that they're, they're a little more acclimated to what businesses are and how they run when they get older. Uh, we have our, let's see, we had the, the installation in, I believe that's gonna be February or January. We're still working on a date for that. And then, uh, yeah, our health and wellness fair we have coming up. We have a great partnership with the city. We love to work with the city. We help businesses get to know not only each other, but, you know, we help out with any regulations that come down, anything COVID. We helped a lot with that, getting information to the businesses. So, uh, yeah, we have a mixer every month. Our last mixer, there was approximately about 50% of the people at the mixer had never been in that business before. So that's a great way to get people there, get people interested, get people talking. Thank you, Tracy. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mayor Waite. Thank you, Bill. Uh, one other partner I wanted to recognize, we have Rob Catherman here from the Water Replenishment District. And they really are a big partner. They gave us a grant of, was it a million dollars, I think? Two million dollars, but who's counting? For a uh, filtration system for our water plant. So this is a case where, you know, the state has provided significant funding, the water replenishment district, the ratepayers, you know, everybody working together made this happen so that we will have a safe, secure, and even tasty water supply. Because water kind of matters. Well, that's it. So we thank you all for coming today. We've covered a lot of ground. I hope you've enjoyed this new format that we did this year. I enjoyed it. I especially enjoyed not having to listen to myself all that time. And so uh, take a moment before you go and, and visit with the people, ask questions and so on. And don't forget the networking because together we can do a lot more than we can do on our own, right? So uh, go to Team Lomita and we'll see you soon. Thanks.